All right, so we're going to go over how to import an Adobe Illustrator image into Maya. First, you want to make sure that all of your lines are closed. If you use open lines, it won't work with the bevel feature, so you do want to make sure that it functions. From there, go to Maya, and once again, remember that you want to start by doing a file and project window. Make sure that you've given it its own folder and that you're saving to your D drive. We may be rendering a video, so all of those images will go into source image. The other thing you might want to check is to make sure you went to Windows and Setting Preferences. There are three areas we'd like to adjust. One, make sure that Undo is off. I'm not or is on. I'm not sure why, but a lot of student computers have been turning it off, so make sure it's on. Two, under settings, make sure that you're changing your time to 30 frames a second NTSC. That will go ahead and set it so that you're using video time instead of film time. That also means that anything that you shoot for live action will match if you do use this for any of your live action projects. And the last is to make sure under Files and Projects that you have Auto Saved enabled. I usually set it to save every about 10 to 15 minutes, and the max number anywhere from 5 to 10. It depends on how far you want to be able to go back. From there, hit Save. Now, a lot of students think that you'll start by going to File Import, but you don't want to do that for an Illustrator document. Since you're bringing in lines and curves, you're going to go to Create, and it's actually its own option, Adobe Illustrator Object. Click the square. Now if all of your lines are closed and you don't have many internal details, you can do a bevel. If you've played around with these settings it looks a little odd, you can always go to Edit and Reset Settings. And then we're going to do a Create. From there, find the version you saved for Maya. If that doesn't work, Remember that when you saved your Illustrator document, you wanted to do a file, save as, make sure that it was Adobe Illustrator. I named mine Maya Export originally. So we'll just name this Export 2 for the sake of this demo. And then underneath, if you're getting an error message, a complete error message, double check to make sure that you saved it as Illustrator 8. It gives you that warning sign, but it does make it so this is kind of a easy compatible file with Maya. It will not actually allow you to import anything from the CS family. So from there, make sure that you've clicked on your Maya Export AI and open. So for mine, this kind of worked is it imported everything, but it didn't cut out the eye details. So I would delete this and adjust it by myself. How I can do that is once again, go to Create, Adobe Illustrator Document, go to the Options box, but just import the curves. And if you're getting error messages, if it looks wrong, if nothing's importing, import the curves and see if it's a little easier. So Create. I'll pick once again my Cat Cat Maya export file. And this is what I have. So I'm going to frame it here because it's a little easier to see. But I would like to cut out the eyes and the nose. So I want this part to be solid and I want this to be clear. The way I can do that is I click the body and then shift click each of the objects and go to surfaces. Remember, this is a curve. Anything that's a line is a curve, but we're going to make it into a 3D surface. So I go to surfaces and bevel plus. Now my object is cut out. Remember that this is referencing my original image. So if I wanted, I could select any of the original features and move them around and it will actually animate. As long as it stays inside once it clips, 
you'll notice it either vanishes, it gives you an error message because the first curve must be outside the other curves. But I could use this method to animate. I could also, if I wanted, undo this and separate these shapes and bevel them out separately. So if you have a fairly complex design, I could select these aspects and bevel them all out separately. So I'll go ahead and do a bevel plus. And honestly, if I hit G on my keyboard, it will repeat the last operation. Once again, that's the letter G, like girl or gorilla. And I could move these and animate them. Maybe give them colors so they're three different shapes. However, for my purposes, this might be a little more complex than I feel like going for this demo. So just to show you, you can do this. This is an option for you. And you could just animate it by hitting S and set key on your timeline. The S will set the key, and then if I wanted it to move, I could move my time slider to where I want the next frame of animation to happen. And if I find these lines getting in the way, once I have everything made, I can delete them. So I could select all this again, hit set key. Go to frame 20, hit S for set key again, and now it should animate. So this is one reason I redid my undo steps, is I could also do a much simpler animation. You don't need to do anything too complex. So I'm going to go back to that bevel plus again, click, 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 go to surfaces, bevel plus, and then I'll get rid of my reference image underneath. Maybe not delete it, but I'll at least hide it. Oopsie. I could go to channel box and turn the visibility off. I can still find it if I go to outliner. So I could go back to that illustrator, turn it back on. But for right now, I'll go back to that view and just animate this. So I might do a set key and do a simple rotation maybe at about 30. It animates that much. Let's give it one second. This will be a very long animation. I would probably speed this up, honestly. Two, three, four, five, and remember that it's 30 frames a second. So right now my animation is going to be five seconds. And if I wanted, I could change that. And now when I play it, you'll see in that view that my cat spins. And it spins a little faster in the second part because my keyframes are closer together. Now if I decided this was too slow or too fast, I could select these keyframes. I think by you highlight with shift from there. So you hold shift, drag over the keyframe you want to move, and then you hold the middle mouse button and you can just drag it around. So if I decided that this whole thing should be quicker, I can hold shift, drag over it, and really just increase the speed of my whole animation. So instead, let me say I wanted to move them every 15 seconds. And there you go. Math. 
do, do, do. I know, a little more boring to watch, but now it'll speed close or speed up, but I won't have anything at the end. You can make your animation between three and five seconds, so if I wanted, I could go ahead and move both of these to 90, and now I'm only doing that animation. To do a test and see what it looks like, stop it, and then go to Window, Play Blast, Box, change your AVI, and then under your Play Blast, go ahead, Save File, Browse, and like everything else, you're saving to your D drive. So I'd say this is cat cat logo test. From there, play blast. It'll render it out and then a new animation will pop up. And that's all I'm looking for for this project. We can make it a little more complex later, but I at least want to see the start of animation. Uh, thank you. Good luck.